All right. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. No problem. It's, it's, it's fun. It is. It's always fun. I'm excited to be back, back with Wordsmith. Yeah, it's been, uh, yeah, your first class was crazy popular when, when we did it a couple of years ago. Uh, it was so the, popular. I mean, it's so popular. It's Andrew so popular. Was it was ridiculous. It, honestly, it was just <laughs> standing room only. It was absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get this kicked off here. Um, we won't launch straight into kind of how you got to where you are right now, but like, where did your career as far as entertainment um, start? Uh, my, my career, uh, entertainment career. Well, I started, um, I guess it really, you know, started the way some people do, I guess, it, in high school, um, you know, a little bit. I, and I say that only because I, I wasn't much interested in entertainment for most of my life. I mean, I was a fan, but I, but I was always writing. In any event, um, I, that last year of high school, I had a, a, a drama professor who wanted to have um, someone, you know, I was a captain of the wrestling team and I had a girlfriend in, in drama and uh, I had a free period. So uh, I was in there and I think he was, I don't know what he was trying to do, but he, he, he challenged me to write a play, which I did do. And then he um, behind my back um, submitted it for, um, uh, you know, scholarships, which I got some small scholarships to go study playwriting. And so I had having nothing else to do, I went ahead and um, went, to, went to school for drama as an actor and studying play, playwriting. And so, yeah, um, in, I, I started to make um, my living as an actor, um, mostly when I, when I got out of school. I moved to Orlando, Florida, hotbed of uh, theater. Um, but, it, but, but it was also where uh, my wife, um, who, to, to be at that time, uh, was, was living. And she was also an actor. And I, I actually started in the theme parks um, as an actor, a dancer, singer, um, you know, comedian, mostly doing comedy at Walt Disney World, at Universal Studios. Um, and at the same time, I had a sketch. I was still writing. So I had a sketch and theater company and I was writing things and, and continuing all of that. And I lived there for a long time and then moved to Los Angeles in the you know early 2000s and started over um, in my early 30s here, um, which is like being in Los Angeles terms, that's like being in your early 70s. So I, 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 I um, started over and um, through a whole bunch of, of crazy circuitous uh, routes, mostly through acting and through improv, improvisational comedy, I ended up um, on the writing staff of Mad TV uh, sketch comedy show um, that was on for many, many years. I mean, I, I was on, that was my first TV writing job, mostly. I had done some little things prior, but, but that was my first staff job. Did you, and then from there, I just wanted to be a writer. Yeah. Did you move to Los Angeles with the focus of being a TV writer? Or did you come out for a different reason? No, I, I, I came, I came here. I mean, again, I had been in this, I, I, when I left Orlando, I had, um, was writing and directing actually for the theme parks as well. And I was writing and directing theater. Um, so I really writing had, and I had the sketch comedy group. So I, I wanted to come and be a, in the ground links is what I wanted to do, which is a, a Los Angeles, uh, sketch comedy company, famous company. Um, I didn't end up doing that, but I, I, that was what I thought I wanted to do was write comedy, sketch comedy. And um, so, but, but I was really, I was also acting still. I was still auditioning. I was still, I even worked out of the theme parks here, you know, as I was trying to make it, um, get it, get started here. So no, I didn't have a really set path until Mad TV uh, came along and then I was like, oh, I love getting paid regularly. This seems great. And, um, and then I wanted to figure out how to do that all the time. So right. th then my focus really, really started. And uh, from there, I, you know, um, kept continuing into TV out, out, of, out of late night and then into scripted primetime TV. Yeah. Uh, were you always slanted towards 
humor or were you kind of open to everything or was that because you'd had a sketch background? I mean, it seems like a natural transition. But Yeah, I mean, initially, um, my plays were not funny. They were, <laughs> were they I wanted to, to be, be kind of, no, they were, oh. I wanted to be kind of Sam Shepard is what I wanted to be. Okay. Um, uh, you know, so there were lots of, you know, um, stressful plays about, uh, you know, uh, bank robbers on the run and um, <laughs> and things like that, you know, like little two handers for a black box theater, you know, right. lots of I- I- emoting and lots of monologues. And then I, I left theater for a minute and a, a, a small sidebar, I decided I would study English and particularly poetry. So I was in a, a poetry workshop at the University of Florida where I met um, a really funny guy um, who became my writing, first writing partner. And so, um, so we, we started doing comedy. I didn't know much about improv comedy then. There, in Florida, it didn't really exist. I mean, it was like short form comedy, but, um, you know, I hadn't seen much of it. So we were sort of making up, making it up as we went along. And I was a massive fan of like Monty Python of um, later Mr. Show of the kids in the hall, you know, these were like, and of course, SNL as well. And so I was a, you know, I was encyclopedic um, <laughs> about that. And so, yeah, I didn't know if I could be funny. I'd never really tried to be, but um, as it turned out, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's I, if you looked at my early plays, you'd probably laugh right at them, I'd say. Um, but but I, yeah, after that, it was all comedy. It was 100 percent comedy. Never, never a dramatic moment uh, has crossed my keyboard. <laughs> that's right. Um, so with that trajectory, starting out of Matt TV, like how did where did you progress from there? I mean, you always hear stories about how people move through the industry and sometimes it's yeah. cycle, sometimes it's not like how how did your uh, progression move? So, yeah, mine was a bit strange. So I, I had a lot of writing partners over the years. They're like, um, they're like, like small um, platonic marriages. Um, and I'm sort of, you know, serially moving through them uh, and friends with all of them as well, <laughs> you know. Um, but I had a, another improv partner and then a writing partner at Mad TV. That relationship, writing relationship, was kind of had come to its conclusion. And in 2006, I think, or five, um, the Writers Guild of America um, went on strike. There was a writer strike. And so that was the, I just joined the union and I was so thrilled to be walking a picket line. It was fantastic. I mean, I legitimately was until I realized that it was, that was a ter- that was much less fun than writing comedy. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's a lot of walking and that's not what writers do, especially <laughs> comedy writers. And outside. They eat. You remember the chip guy from earlier? That <laughs> is a very typical day. Um, so I, um, I, while, while I was out on strike, I, there was another writer from mad TV named Stephen Craig. And um, Stephen was an older writer, a little more experienced. He'd written on SNL. He'd been on Mad for many years. And he had sort of uh, chosen me to, to work with many times at the show. And so we, we turned out we lived in the same neighborhood and we were walking the picket line. And so he's like, well, do you want to write a, a spec, you know, a, 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 our own sitcom? And we chatted about some ideas and, Neither of us had ever written it. We'd only written sketch comedy. Neither of us even really knew the format, really. Mm-hmm. And um, we we wrote one on spec. And then a year later, Stephen had left the show. <laughs> I was still writing on Mad. And I got a call that um, it had been handed as a sample um, to ABC and that they wanted to meet with Stephen and I. Um, famous uh, one-time writing partners, uh, Stephen Craig and Brian Bradley. And so we, we came to ABC. We hadn't seen each other since a, a friendly salad a year prior. And um, we walked in and they bought the show, um, which is a very unusual way to back into scripted television. Right. Um, we weren't even really writing partners. We, we, we were so excited. We walked out and, and walked into the wrong elevator and ended up in the sub-basement of... Uh, 
of one of the, the, the executive buildings on Disney Disney's lot um, just lost because we were like, what just happened? <laughs> um, and that led from there, we were really off to the races. Um, we wrote a lot of pilots. Um, we ended up on Scrubs. ABC put us on Scrubs on the ninth season of Scrubs. Um, it was my first scripted primetime writer's room experience, very different than Mad TV, which is a sketch, sketch, sketch comedy is a far a different beast. Um, much looser, much more crazy um, frat house antics, you know, as we're running around offices, writing sketches madly to, to get them into the show. You know, this was the first time I was properly like sitting in a writer's room with, you know, <laughs> other, other more experienced uh, comedy writers. And it was, a you know, I learned how to write um, sitcoms and how to break sitcoms by doing it, you know, um, by being in, in, on, in scrubs. From there, we moved into some deals and onto other shows, wrote some other pilots and, you know, it just, the career continued one, one thing after another, after that, but that was really our, our way in, which is a, a weird script that we wrote that sat around and ended up in someone's lap a year later, you know, what was the I'm not story? sure their lap was involved, but uh, um, <laughs> it might have been. I actually don't know of the, st- of the story of that, of that yeah, pilot, of the pilot, it was called this little piggy was the name of it. And um, half hour family, kind of a, fa- a comedy about a family. And um, it was, uh, it was, it was called this little piggy because it was a little bit of like Steven's life and my life blended at that time. A lot of people were moving home, you know, the, the housing crisis had happened. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people were moving back in with each other. Um, people that had previously had their own homes or whatever were, 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 were either getting back with their brothers and sisters or with their parents. Um, and so we wanted to write about that. That was going on in my family. So this guy, he's the piggy that stayed home. He's, you know, um, he, he has kids. He's living in the house he grew up in. He's managing the pharmacy that his parents started. And his brothers and sisters have left and gone off. And now we're all back. So they've all slowly one by one come back. And now they're all the three, all three of them back in the home where they grew up. <laughs> at the same arguing over which ta- you know chair to sit at at the table because that's their chair and right. um and it was yeah it was fun they actually did that one twice we we, we shot that pilot that at nice abc question. at abc um it didn't get picked up and then a year later nbc bought it and recast it and we shot it again and again Crazy. did not get picked up yeah <laughs> yeah that's wild that's very common. I was going to ask, know. so how common is, I mean, you've obviously done, written a number of pilots. I mean, I know the ones that I've seen on TV, but like how many of them been that have not been picked up versus the ones that have been picked up? And how does that oh, exist? My, my record is terrible. I, I've, I've sold, I don't know, 15 or 18 scripts, which is to say, pitched and sold them and written them and been paid for them. Yeah. And one of them has become a series <laughs> one <laughs> out of all of them. Um, and that is very co- common, mm-hmm. you know um, it's, it's actually less common now, uh, you know, that was, a, it, believe it or not, even 10 years ago, the business was very different and there, there were, you know, network television had a still was kind of, holding on (laughs) and um you know the process in network television is to but you know make a pilot Mm -hmm. um and then make a bunch of them and then choose you know if they make 30 pilots or 20 pilots they're going to choose two or three or four from 10 depending you know to make into series um so the vast majority of them never see the light you know the day i mean they get tested and you get to watch people watch your show and, you know, give it, give it their damning criticism in a focus group. But um, other than that, it, it, it doesn't air. So um, yeah, there's a, there's a huge, but you know, at the time it was a way that writers, you know, you'd make a nice living doing it because, you know, you're each of those scripts is, a, is in the pilot itself that you're shooting um, is enough for you to, to, 
have a nice, nice, you know, career. Um, getting a maid is the, you know, is the hard, is the hard bit and staying on the air even harder, mm. you know, so, and now it's much more different, you know, now, now we have the streamers, we have this that massive universe of content that's being created yeah. and it's much less about sort of pilots and, and that it's, you know, it's a, it's a more complicated, you know, scattered game than it used to be. Is that better or worse? Oh, it's both, you know. Um, I think in some ways it's better for, like, for, for, it's better for the audience. I think the audience gets that's fair. a lot of content that's more varied and less executive driven, less executive driven, not, not completely, you know. So, um, and that's great. Um, and, 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 they're, and they're more willing to take risks on things, um, you know, sometimes with a pilot, you know, they're, show the pilot a little bit and they get some bad focus numbers or they or, or they're confusing numbers and and there's a lot of agendas while they're picking so you know you a very good very good pilots i like to think some of mine were in this category you know don't or get close but don't quite make it because a whole bunch of of machinery that's going on inside during that process but when they're buying shows that are going to series it if they're going to buy something from you they're usually going to make it now you know, right. so that's better to a certain degree. And the risk taking, I think, is is better. The pilot world was very narrow. You know, you were you were sort of trying to hit a mark to hopefully get past that pickup zone and into making the show. And then once you get into making the show, you had a little more freedom to sort of make the show you intended. But until then, you're playing that game all the way through. Right. And I think now it's it's a little better. You can you can you can sell a show that's a little stranger, a little weirder, and all the stories don't have to be exactly the same and lay out the same way. You know, you've, you've right. seen that as a, as a viewer, there's just a, a wider variety of storytelling um, shapes, I would say. You know? Yeah. I mean, I guess the limitation before was that sitcoms and, you know, even 45 minute shows were all supposed to be like 20 to 25 episodes per season. Yeah. Now it doesn't matter. There's no mold. There's no length. There's no, yeah. I mean, everything's changed in terms of how you attack, attack um, the storytelling, you know, as well. Um, I don't think we really work in acts the way we used to. Yeah. The old act, act structure was centered around commercial breaks, you know. So right. you, you had act breaks because you had to go to commercial and you had 21 minutes of content for a 30 minute time slot or whatever it is for hours, but you know, the rest of that was ads, you know, now you don't have that. So you're, you're, that's changed a lot of how we can tell stories and mm -hmm. the shape of them. And I love that. I think, you know, you're seeing half hour mysteries, serialized mysteries now, you know, where a mystery wouldn't be something you would dare to do in a half hour in the past, yeah. you know, you're seeing with the Mandalorian, and Disney's output, you're seeing half hour action stuff, which would normally fit into an hour slot, you know, so, and, and it's wonderful because you really don't need, you know, an hour of Hawkeye, you know, <laughs> you need a half hour of Hawkeye or a half hour of, of Star Wars. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's all of those strictures have come, come away. And now, and now you're, you're able to kind of create in a more free way in that, in that way. Yeah, um, it it's so just harder fun. to sell them, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. That always that is always the way. But I mean, I mean, considering this industry where you say, I mean, you've produced this many, or you've written this many pilots, you've sold this many pilots, only you know X amount actually makes it. But you're still a successful TV writer because you still sell the product. I mean, it's it, yeah. your, your success is not dictated <laughs> by how many shows you actually get to air. It's by you know how many projects you actually put out into the world, which is an yeah. And then you know, I'm in, in, and I've I've spent some time also in other people's rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one part of my career is creating shows yeah. um, or running shows. But I've also spent some time um, mostly as a consulting producer, uh, but but in a kind of co-EP way, working on things as varied as the big show show on Netflix or the most recent season of Star Trek Lower Decks, which is an animated um, series on, on Paramount Plus and the Star Trek universe, um, yeah. you know. Um, so I get to go and work in those rooms for somebody else too, which is, you know, another 
way that um, I make my living. And um, another aspect of the work that is different than kind of creating a pilot, you know, it's being a part of that team and being a part of that, mm-hmm. that um, the room and uh, as we build the series um, is great. It's just the best, you know, I love them both. I was going to say, do you have a preference between the two or is it fairly equal? Well, I think, I think at the end of the day, I love, I love writing pilots and I, I love creating the world, yeah. you know? Um, and, and so that, that, and that's really true with the characters. It's really true with what we would call like the, the sort of story engine that you would need in a piece of serialized television or even unserial, non-serialized, you know, just where these stories come from creating a little machine that that's going to go, you know, every week um, yeah. and, and bring a story every week. I love that process. I'm, I'm, I think television pilot writing is a very high degree of difficulty um, kind of skill set and in, in one that I'm still working on hard to be better at all the time. And, but it's, it is the most interesting um, part of it, you know, cause it's pure, purely creative, but working in someone else's space, you know, and with actors who have been cast, who are not potential, but are real human beings <laughs> who are really going to say these lines um, is another fun skill set because, you know, the, the script is a blueprint, you know, it's, it's instructions for a play, you know, um, it's not the, it's not the play, you know, the play is everybody working together on set, the actors and directors and all the designers and everyone else. And um, that part of the process, there's nothing, I love that, you know, the theater person in me loves making a show, you know? And um, so I love that too. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. It yeah. does seem to speak to both sides of your personality, doing the two different sides of the industry. Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, I've been lucky that way, you know, um, and lucky to get a chance to to sort of be a part of some fun, cool things and some stinky, terrible things and, you know, yeah. some things that never saw the light of day. <laughs> but, but it's always never boring, I will say that. I, um, I imagine be a little so. bit anxiety making but not not boring i would i would say <laughs> thank you so much for attending brian thank you for your time and uh, it was a joy 